Here. Linden McDowell. Here. Bridget McCandless. Here. Les Boatwright. Here. Sherry Tyndall. Here. Okay. Everybody present. I don't think we. Do I hear a motion to waive the reading of minutes for last meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. We don't need to call the roll. Aye. aye. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and get to the uh, discussion. The discussion is on the fuel cost adjustment recommendation. I know that several of the members have questions on this. I do too. Um, my first question is, I heard two things, 24 months and 36 months. What, what causes that? Anybody know? The, the suggestion from the mayor was for a 36 month uh, recovery period. And that's so that we minimize the, uh, the actual uh, extra that's on each, each ratepayers bill from month to month over that 36 month period. How much are we recovering? The the total excess the the total excess costs uh, during February was a, approximately eight million dollars. Um, some of that we've already recovered. Uh, some of that is built into our annual review. Uh, so we would we'd have to look at um, across the whole across all of those cost records. Uh, but it's a it's about eight million total that we'd be trying to recover, uh, including what we've already. Uh, put into the into the formula and when you say you've already recovered it how in the in the monthly billing statement we have the what's called the fuel cost adjustment uh, the fuel cost adjustment is a mechanism that is built into the rates so that you can account for either costs that are in excess of the baseline or in some cases below the baseline in which in so you can it'll it'll generate either an extra charge or a credit that's then applied to the to the monthly bills uh, that assessment is done every right now we do that every month um, based on recommendations from uh, both the puab and the council the new rates that went into effect last year which will sunset the old rates will sunset in 23 that that has been pushed to a an annual an annual adjustment, but with uh, our discretion to review it more frequently. But it, it's something that goes on the bill every month uh, as an adjustment, uh, again, above or below the baseline that's that's figured into those rates. Right, my wife paid my bill. Is that, does the uh, FCA uh, show on the bill? Separate? Yes, sir, it does. Anybody else on the board got questions and statements? Is, is that about $5 per month? Per it, it's going to vary because it's it's based on your usage. So it'll be say an extra two cents. Okay. Uh, if it's two cents, then it's two cents per whatever your kilowatt hour usage was for that month. Do we know what our cost for this fuel is going to be a year from now? Is it? Are we going to get in trouble? Is what I'm worried about. No, sir. Um, this again, this is above and beyond the the rate the rate. The rate that's established for each class is based on a, um, a an annualized fuel cost from back about 2005. Uh, that formula has not been updated until the new rate schedules that we've put into place last year. So the rates, the 11 and a half cents, the you know, eight cents for business, whatever the whatever each rate class is, that assumes a fuel cost that was set back when we were burning coal in 2005. So the the each month we look at what our actual fuel costs are and and energy costs and we compare that to the baseline and that's how you come up with that differential. Uh, so it might be two cents, it might be two and a half cents. Uh, it's going to vary from month to month. Now, since it's a, since it's last month's costs applied to this month's usage, um, we recognize that uh, coming into July, people's people's bills are already going to be higher than normal just because of summer uh, air conditioning. We will we will look at that and we'll take that into account and we may we may try to recover less in July and August and a little bit more in October, November, 
so that so that we take into takes into account how it impacts the ratepayers' bills and the check they have to actually write. Thank you. So at the end of let's say twenty four months, because of all the adjusting and everything, we don't know whether we would recover everything. Well, again, we will we will plan. We'll we'll take that eight million dollars and we'll assume uh, X amount per month over thirty six months, and that's what we'll build into the formula. We'll adjust it up or, up or down uh, depending on how how severe people's bills are, and then at each year, not just at twenty four months, but every year we take a look at where we are, uh, whether we've over recovered, under recovered, and then we again build that into the fuel cost adjustment formula. But at the over over thirty six months, we will the target will have been to uh, recover that entire amount over that thirty six months. Over thirty six, not twenty four. Not twenty four. Thirty six. That was thirty six. Now, you all can make whatever re recommendation that you think is appropriate. What was what was suggested by council for your discussion was thirty six months. Well, yeah, I understand that, but my to me, I can't. I can't in my head or on paper figure out the amounts uh, that's going to be recovered in 36 months. And you're telling me it's $8 million. I don't know that we'll be able to recover all that in 36 months. Well, I think Mr. McDowell had it right. Um, if, you, if, if everything was equal across the board, that would represent approximately $4 a month, 4 to $5 a month on, on everyone. Now, if you are someone with high usage, your share is going to be a little bit more. If you're somebody with low usage, it's going to be a little less. Uh, so that, that it's hard to put a it's hard to put a, an actual number on it because it is driven by usage. Okay. But about four about four to five dollars a month across that thirty six months. Okay, Bridget, you got anything else you want? Sure. Um, we discuss these like these events are <clears throat> once in 150 years, except those are getting much, much closer as we have more climate disturbance. If you watch uh, the Pacific Northwest, I can't even imagine what their power sharing arrangement is going to have to do for the last week. Um, so we spread this over 36 months. We have another event. We're going to end up having to stack these on top of each other. Is that a fair understanding? If we end up with another large adjustment, that would be a possibility. Okay. Um, and in in our relationship with the Southwest Power Pool, um, we have shared responsibility when we have events that happen elsewhere, even without impacts here. Do we anticipate that we will have more of those in the area that we are sharing our energy pool with? We just had uh, here just recently, there were some articles that came out about the uh, outlook for the summer for the, going into the fall. And right now, Southwest Power Pool is looked at very favorably that we've managed our assets well. Uh, as a group, we cooperate well as far as scheduling outages to make sure that uh, the most generation possible is available through these heavy demand months. Uh, and r right now, the outlook for the outlook for Southwest Power Pool is, is pretty stable. And my understanding is that, um, well, let me ask: Have we received a legal opinion about our choices and opportunities here with recouping? Yes, we we looked at um, we had several a couple of different attorneys uh, take a look at it. Uh, we had a, an attorney from Spiegel McDermott, which uh, represents us and a lot of other utilities in utility matters. We also had uh, one of the staff attorneys from MPUA, uh, and basically they they both agreed that um, the while you can always you can always file a lawsuit. Uh, the chances of a successful lawsuit in this case are very low um, because the practices that were in place in February are the same things that we've done for years. Um, companies were following procedures that had been developed and accepted for, for years. So to try to say that they did something wrong or irresponsible, it will be very difficult to prove. And, and you got a written opinion on that, that we can be shared with the PUAB? It was, 
the 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 letter that we got back, uh, we were we were advised that it needed to be it needed to be confidential for attorney client privileges because it it discusses potential litigation strategies and so that that would not be something we would make public. Okay, and just so I learn, since I'm still new on the board, when we get legal opinions about things like that, are those then shared with us in closed session um, with the obvious confidentiality requirements for the PUAB, or are they held by the city, or how does that work? I'll ask Sarah. Uh, the, since this body is a recommending... Since this body is a recommending body for the city council, uh, the city council would go into closed session to talk about potential litigation. That is not a a task or duty that's assigned to you all through the charter that to talk about potential litigation and things like that nature. So if there is some sort of issue that has arose that through the electric utility that needs to be discussed for legal purposes, that would be through the city council, not with you all, unfortunately. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I was just doodling over here and figured out how much this is bringing in. If we do it over 24 months, it brings in $330,000 a month. If we do it over 36, it's $222,000 a month. And once again, what do we have? 56,000 subscribers? 57. 57. It's approximately $5 per subscriber, but once again, as you've already pointed out, Mr. Null, it depends upon the usage. Right. Any question from the new board members? The question I have is how many customers and uh, the other member already addressed that, so. Okay. Um, that was about the only thing I was curious about. We have approximately 57,000 electric accounts. And that's, that includes residential and commercial. Okay. So $5, if, let's say the fee is $5 a month, that's about $285,000 a month we'd be collecting over that 36 months. It's yeah. going to be much higher well, on the industrial, right? Anybody that has, anyone that has higher usage is going to pay, yeah. obviously, a higher higher share. That, that was just a... Uh, right. If, if, if all is, if everything's Everybody's equal, equal, it's about five dollars. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's say we do that for that thirty-six month period. If we get to that point ahead of the thirty-six months, will we stop? Yes, sir. Collecting. Okay. So it's not something we'll continue on. And... No, sir. The, the, the fuel cost adjustment is it's not a set rate. It's a it's something we calculate each month right. as we go through. And when the when the costs have been collected, they would disappear from the calculation. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, um, I guess addressing what Bridget was saying, if we have another event in 12 months where there's a spike or for some reason we have another $8 million stacked on top, will we recalculate the whole thing or would they be added as separate, separate line items? Right. It's a, it's a single line item in the, in the rate formula. Um, but we have discretion as to how much we include in there. So if, if another event like February happens again, we'll be back to discuss it with y'all. Right. Uh, Very good. And how to, how to treat the, the rate payers the fairest. Very good. Uh, this, this was in February, right? Yes, sir. February. Now that was during the COVID, right? Correct. So more people were staying home. Is there a possibility that this falls under the CARES Act, the CARE money? I think uh, all the CARES money that we've were allocated has been spent at this point. It's been spent? Yeah, the utility assistance money that uh, we provided through CSL has all been has all been utilized and I think right now they have the rental assistance program that they were allocated through the state through the county uh, which includes some utility assistance but I think I'm not sure where they are on on spending those funds down to this point uh, were you at the council meeting Monday this past Monday Monday no I wasn't 
Did it work? Okay. Well, I'm going to step off the board a little bit and let somebody talk. That we don't let me let talk council person. I have a question. Did I understand from the council meeting that we took $2 million of the care money and paid off the water department for the it's other federal money we received. That's the American Recovery Plan money, which is okay. different than the than the COVID money. Okay. The COVID money is all spent. Thank so you, Robert. The COVID money is all spent, but this is a different amount. This is a different funding. Yes, it's called the American Recovery Plan. Well, I just don't understand that that money was lent to the Parks and Recreation. And the Parks and Recreation didn't pay it back. I don't know what your question is. My question is, why did that money go there instead of going to maybe this, uh, the field adjustment? I have no idea. You're going to have to ask the city manager. I mean, this was not COVID money. All right. I understand that. Okay. But it's still recovery, right? But I don't know what the guidelines are for it. Okay. So please don't think I do, because I don't. Okay, thank you. I just, I just, we're moving money around here, and I don't know where it's all going. Well, it, from the from the CARES Act, we did get uh, was two point about two point one million in funds that we did use for. Uh, ratepayer assistance. Uh, okay, so I know that. Power and Light did share in, in the CARES money that was received. Yeah, I know that went, but it went to ratepayers exactly where it should, right? Okay. I have no further questions. Mr. Chairman, are you ready for a motion? Yeah. <clears throat> I move that we go ahead and recommend a recovery of 36 months. And let's hope it doesn't get much worse and pass that on to the city council. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? Second. I got a second. Any more discussion on it before we vote? Please call the roll. Larry Porter? Yes. Joe Zach? Yes. David McDowell? Yes. Bridget McCandless? Yes. Les Boatwright? Yes. Sherry Tindall? Yes. Motion passed. Any other comments from the new members or old members that want to say something? Glad to be here. Glad to have all the new members. I've checked with uh, Sarah, and I will be contacting you and get a hold of uh, Mary and post something for a meeting to orientation meeting for all you new people, okay? Sounds good. With that being said, this place is adjourned. Thank you. Boy, I did that for less than nice. Good job, Larry.